This is the first in my series of lectures on statistics for nuclear medicine. Lecture 1 deals with descriptive statistics. Statistical methods can be split into two broad categories. There are descriptive statistics which are naturally used to describe data and they're valuable for summarizing data in a few descriptive parameters. That's very useful as an aid to presentation and to interpretation of the data. Then there are inferential statistics which are used to infer conclusions from the data, particularly when we're involved with hypothesis testing where we want to ask do the data that we have support a particular experimental hypothesis or are they just due to chance. Uh, future lectures in this series will spend a lot of time looking at inferential statistics but in this lecture we'll be dealing with descriptive statistics. An important part of descriptive statistics is presenting the data and we may do it in the form of tables where uh, a lot of measurements can be given, but if we give all the details, then there'll be too much to take in easily. So it's more usual to give a summary of the data, for example, by giving the frequency of occurrence of each category of measurement. Graphs and charts are a good way of representing data visually, and we should look at bar graphs, pie charts, and histograms as examples of this. Data summary is important by giving numerical data which are descriptive parameters that will summarize the data in a few numbers. Examples of that are the mean of the measurements and the spread about the mean and we shall look at those in this lecture. Here's an example of data presented as a table. Here it shows the different types of scan we might do, bone scan, lung scan, renogram, and the number of each that have been performed in a particular uh, period, and the percentage of the total that that represents. Here the table shows the actual numbers, which are very good if we want to do further calculations, but because there are a lot of data there, it takes some time to assimilate the overall message at a glance. So a bar chart uh, is a good graphical way of describing the data. Here the height of each bar shows the number in each category. This is good if we want to illustrate the absolute size of the category uh, and it also shows the relative size. So we can see 115 bone scans and 57 lung scans and see at a glance that lung scans are about half the number of bone scans and renograms just a little less. In this way, we can easily take everything in at a glance from the visual impact. Notice that in a bar chart like this, the order of the categories doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether we put the bone scan first or in the middle or at the end. The meaning of the data is exactly the same. Here's another way of displaying data as a pie chart. Here the size of each se sector shows the percentage in each category. Again, you can easily take it in at a glance, but this particular display is very good for showing the relative size of each category. So if that is Im more important than the absolute number, a pie chart is very good. For example, it's very easy to see that bone scans represent half of the total number of scans and lung scans a quarter. You may be wondering what Florence Nightingale's got to do with our story. You will be aware that she was an English nurse, probably best known as the Lady of the Lamp, for the work that she did nursing wounded soldiers during the Crimean War. Uh, it's well known that she established nursing as a profession, possibly less well known that she was a statistician. In fact, she pioneered the visual presentation of data and she's credited with inventing the pie chart. Here's an example of uh, uh, what she called a polar area diagram, a forerunner of our pie chart. Here she's showing the causes of mortality in the army in the east in 1856, where each sector represents a different month and the size of the sector, the number of soldiers killed during that month. One way of describing data is as a histogram. Here, the height of each histogram bar shows the number in each interval. Here, the intervals represent the months, January, February, March, and the heights of the bars, the number of bone scans that are performed in that month, 89 in January, 103 in February, and so on. This is very similar to the bar chart that we looked at earlier, 
but in this case the order of the bars is important because of course the order represents the time sequence from January through to December. From this sort of display it's easy to see in which month we did most bone scans in May and in which month we did fewest bone scans in December. The frequency distribution is something we should be talking about a lot. This is another version of a histogram which shows how often each number occurred. To plot this we have to group the data into distinct ranges. So for example uh, the number of times we did between 71 and 80 bone scans in a month was only one but on two months we did between 81 and 90 bone scans and in four months we did between 91 and 100 bone scans. So the distribution of the numbers here shows the distribution of bone scans each month from the smallest number to the largest number and gives us at a glance an overall view of the distribution rather than just a single number. Obviously computers are very good at this sort of thing not only for recording the data in the first place as we take the measurements but also for processing it to analyze the results and then presenting the results in the form of graphs like the ones I've been showing. There are st specialized statistics packages uh, designed just for this for example SPSS is a sophisticated package which is widely used um, but is perhaps probably more advanced than is necessary for simple statistics. There are online statistical tools like Graphpad and many others where you don't actually need to purchase any software, you can just go to the website and enter your data and get the results calculated for you. But actually even simple spreadsheets like Microsoft Excel, although they're not specifically designed for statistics, do have statistical tools within them and so they are actually a very good way of recording, analyzing and presenting data because many people have them available on their computers anyway. So during this series of lectures I be sh should be using several illustrations of how you can use Microsoft Excel for these calculations because it's a tool that many people have available to them. That is the end of the first part of my lectures on descriptive statistics. <laughs>